Hello and welcome to this tutorial. Today I'm going to be showing you how I made this cool little effect in Cinema 4D using the Mittable object. So I hope you enjoy and I'll just jump right in. Cool, so first you want to start off with a sphere and call that Cloner Object. So we're not actually going to be rendering the sphere, this is just going to be purely for cloning objects onto. So we just want to create a cloner and um, under mode we want to change that to object and put the cloner object in there. Cool. And now we want to create another sphere, put that in the cloner and just change the radius to 5. And select the cloner object and change the count to maybe something like 32 so we've got a good amount of them. And actually if you go back to the clone object, you just want to turn off render perfect because that can sometimes mess with our clones. Um, and then change the type to icosahedron. Cool. Now, um, what we want to do is just duplicate this um, cloner object and just change the countdown to 20. And so here we're going to be just creating some bigger spheres. Now we have um, a bunch of spheres overlapping and that's because of our seed here. That's using the same seed for both cloners so we just want to change that. Cool. That's all good. Now let's just group both of these cloners. So Alt G for Windows users, Command G for Mac I believe. And just call this our cloners. Awesome, now we just want to add some movement onto these spheres. So under MoGraph, under Effectors, with the cloners selected, we want to create a Formula Effector. And um, under Parameter, let's just um, change position X to 0 and then position Z to 100. So now, if you press play, you should see cool little uh, automatically looping animation which is pretty cool and I'm just going to turn off the scale there on the formula so it doesn't randomize the scale at all awesome now it's a little bit fast the movement so I'm just under the effector tab on the formula I'm just going to change the project time to 0 0.5 so that should be about half the speed well yeah exactly half the speed cool and I'm just going to make it a little bit longer on my timeline. And that should loop. Yeah, nice. The formula seems to loop um, every 30 frames or so. But if you've changed your project time to 0 0.5, then it should loop every 60 frames. Cool. So by selecting both cloners, we also want to add a random effector. And under parameters, we just want to turn off position and turn on scale and turn on uniform scale and change that to like 0 0.5. So we've got some just simple randomization. Awesome. So now let's just turn off the cloner object and then create a new sphere. So this is the sphere that we're actually going to be rendering. Um, change the type to icosahedron. Um, turn off render perfect. And change the segments to like 48 and then the radius let's make it a little bit small to like 60. Cool, let's play that. Yeah, I think this is what we're looking for. Um, now let's just group that sphere and these cloners together. So Alt G and Actually, sorry, no, we don't want to group it. We want to put both of those in a metable object. So let's grab our metable and put that sphere and the cloners in there. Now, you're not going to see much at this point, and that's because we need to change the editor subdivisions to something uh, a high resolution so that we can actually see what the metable is going to be doing. 
awesome. So this is exactly the type of effect that we're looking for. And I'm just going to change the render subdivisions to one centimeter so that um, we just get the best um, look at render time. Awesome, there's not really much else you need to do in terms of the um, overall look and feel here, apart from obviously shaders and lighting. So I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. So let's start the uh, rendering process. So I'm just going to grab a camera and enable that. And then under coordinates, I'm just going to keep it simple. Change X and Y to zero. And maybe change this to 100 minus 800. And then zero on the rotations. Cool. That seems to be working. Now let's just pick a frame. Good frame to render. Something like something like that. It's a nice frame. And remember to save your files. Because you don't want to be losing things when it if it crashes. Well, that's taking a while. Cool. Now I'm not going to go overboard with the lighting and stuff like this because this is where you can be creative. Um, but I'm just going to show you like the basics of how I achieved the oily looking texture. So uh, let's create a new material and let's call that light. And under this menu here, create a sky object and then put that light on there. So we're just going to grab an IBL. And I'll put a link in the description to the IBL that I'll be using. Um, and also, just to show you, there's this awesome website here called HGRI Haven, which is where I found the IBL that I use for this. And it's it's great. It um, has so many awesome HDRIs and definitely check it out. Cool, so under the, the luminance channel for that texture we want to go and grab the um, IBL. So I've got them stored in a specific place. Um, lim, lib, libombo. <laughs> Not entirely sure how to pronounce that, but anyway. Cool. Um, now, under the render settings, we just want to change the render type to physical. And under anti-aliasing, I like to use Michelle or Mitchell. Um, and then under options, just turn off default light. Oh, actually, I'm just going to change my resolution as well. 1920 by 1080. And then... Um, under the physical tab, I'm just going to change that to progressive so we get the fastest results possible. And then under effects, I'm going to add global illumination. Cool, so let's just give that a quick test render to see if everything's working. Cool. Now I'm just going to dock this over on the left here. That's usually what I like to do just so that I can work in the scene and see what I'm rendering. Cool, now let's just um, right click the sky object and under Cinema 4D Tags, create a compositing tag. So now let's just turn off the scene by camera so that we don't see our IBL in the background. And we just want a basic color in the background. So um, let's create, let's grab a background object and then create a new material and put that on the background object and open up the material turn off reflectance and then under texture we want to grab a gradient and then just change the gradient type to circular like so and just swap the position of the white and the black colors and then we don't want it to be completely white so let's change this to like 95 on the value and the black, let's change that to like 50. So we have a nice little gradient that we'll see in the background. So let's just render that quickly. Cool. That's nice. Now, um, 
let's make this look oily. So let's create a new PBI material um, and put that on to the metal ball. Now let's open up that PBR material and then under reflectance, under default diffuse, that's where we want to add the black color. So, um, sorry, under the layer color, layer color section, just change the value to five. So it's not completely black, but still really dark. Now, um, under the default reflection section, let's just change the specular strength to 20. And under layer for now, change the preset to oil. I know that's vegetable oil, but the look seems to be pretty good. Awesome. And then just change the roughness to 2. Now let's give that a render. Cool, already we have something that's looking pretty good. I'm just, I like to add a little bit of um, displacement on just so that um, you don't get such perfect reflections that you see here. So let's enable the displacement and then under texture, let's add a noise and open that up and change the noise type to wavy turbulence. That's always a nice looking one. And then change the global scale to something like 500 maybe. Yeah. And then um, you want sub polygon displacement. So that way it actually adds ge geometry at displacement while well, when it adds displacement so that you can actually see the, the texture. And just turn on round geometry as well. Cool, and let's just change the strength to maybe 50% so it's not too strong and give that a test render. So quite often the um, displacement will add quite a lot to the render time, but it's worth it. I will be hopefully um, getting a new computer soon, so I'll be able to um, use Octane and all that good stuff. So sorry for the long render time. Nice. Kind of lucky with those settings there. <laughs> but I quite like that. That looks good. That looks more like it's a liquid. And yeah, I'm quite happy with that. Um, with my one, I did end up um, putting it through After Effects and, and just playing around with it a little bit more and adding... Um, that kind of revolving animation you can see and then I also added like this kind of watery texture onto it which was pretty cool yeah so uh, feel free to uh, get creative and create something that's more tailored to your style and send me um, a link on social media if you create something I'd love to have a look so yeah I hope you enjoyed this um, please like and subscribe I'd really really appreciate it I'm going to be making heaps more of these tutorials and um, let me know if you have any requests of something that you'd like me to um, talk about or maybe um, give a tutorial on yeah so I hope you enjoy the rest of your day and thanks for watching bye